the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory 
to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. people grace to withstand the temptations of the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 25. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another's secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the soul of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. (coughs) This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had drops. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, So that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The third commandment is a familiar one. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. In it, we learn that we are to set aside a day each week for us to stop the work which occupies the rest of the week. Just as the Lord himself rested on the seventh day after completing the work of creation, so too are his people to do all their work in six days so that they may rest from their labors. But the third commandment isn't simply about lying around on the couch and doing nothing. The Lord has given us rest for a purpose. We do not keep the third commandment simply by staying home from the office. We stay home from the office and take a break from the field so that we can gather together as the people of God and hear the word of God. The third commandment isn't just about rest. It's about a particular kind of rest which is given to his people by God himself when his people are gathered together to hear his word, to remember what Christ has done, how much he loves them, and then to rejoice in all those gifts. Come to me, Jesus says in Matthew 11, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Indeed, the third commandment is given by the Lord so that he might give us rest through the gifts that he gives us in the divine service. But in addition, if we are to keep the third commandment, if we are to fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, if we are to regard God's word as holy and, and then gladly hear and learn it, that means then we must also live lives according to that word. You see, the Word of God is not an opinion or a suggestion. It is God's own will revealed to us. And so we who have stopped our work, we who have gathered together, we who hear His Word, if we are to keep the third commandment, can not only honor His Word while we are here in the divine service, and then set it aside when we walk out those doors. If we are to keep the third commandment, we cannot keep it like the Pharisees. It was the Sabbath day, you remember, in the Holy Gospel. Jesus and the Pharisees had put all, all their work aside so that they could gather together in the synagogue where they could hear the word of God from Moses and the prophets and then respond with their psalms and prayers. They had done what the Pharisees was, thought was necessary in order to keep the day holy. <laughs> but then, walked out of the synagogue and began almost immediately to despise the very word that they had heard while they were there. But Jesus isn't about to let them get away with it. Now, already in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus had tried to teach the Pharisees about the Sabbath two other times. The first time, Jesus healed on the Sabbath a man whose, whose hand was withered, and the Pharisees were outraged. It's Luke chapter 6. The second time, Jesus was teaching on a Sabbath, and there was a woman who had been suffering from a disabling spirit for 18 years. That's a long time to suffer. She was bent over, couldn't stand up straight, so Jesus called her over and said, Woman, you are freed from your disability. He laid his hands on her. She was immediately made straight and began glorifying God, while the Pharisees, because of their lack of love, were shamed in front of everyone, and so became angry with Jesus. You see, Jesus has a, had extended mercy willingly and freely while the Pharisees were unwilling to help that woman because, after all, they didn't want to work on the Sabbath. So, 
today's Holy Gospel is the third and final time that Jesus would try to teach the Pharisees how to rightly understand the Sabbath and keep the third commandment. But this time, the Pharisees are expecting it. In fact, it's likely that it's the very reason they invited him to come. They were trying to trap him. And so they are watching him carefully, the text says, when again a person in need, a man with dropsy, which is probably like edema, someone who's taking on water, happens to stand before him on the Sabbath. And again, on the Sabbath, Jesus what does what the Pharisees thought he would do. It didn't matter whether it was Monday or Tuesday or even the Lord's Day. Jesus responded the same way every time. His mercy was consistent. His teaching was clear. The Sabbath could not stop him from keeping the law of Moses and the prophets. Because the word of Moses and the prophets had taught him, as it should have taught the Pharisees too, to be merciful. To love that neighbor in me just as much as he loved himself, whether it was the Sabbath or not. (laughs) Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Jesus has now answered that question three times, and three times the answer is the very same. The Sabbath is a day of rest, to be sure. It is a day on which we are to put aside our work. That is clear. Every Lord's Day, the people of God should gather together to hear the Word of God. But then, having heard the Word of God, they honor that Word that they have heard, and they keep that Word as sacred by then carrying out that Word in their lives. By continuing to be merciful and by showing love to their neighbors. Jesus' answer is consistent and clear. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? (laughs) Well, you tell me. If your son or an ox fell into the pit, would you not be merciful? Would you not do the work that was necessary to help him regardless of the day? And they all know they would. And the work to get an ox out of the pit, that's not a short job. It would take all day. And yet he knows, and they know, they all would go do it. Just like you would be with the calf, the the cow who was having a calf. They can't respond. His His question is irrefutable. Quite literally, the Pharisees can think of nothing to say. Now, the English translation says they they couldn't reply, but quite literally, they didn't have the resources. They didn't have an argument to make against him. Now, they were the ones who had invited him, just waiting for another opportunity to catch him minimizing the law of Moses so that they could have some reason to get rid of him. But once again, it is Jesus who is the one doing the trap. It is Jesus that is teaching them that their understanding of the law of God is woefully insufficient. They are the ones who have not kept the Sabbath. They have sinned against the Sabbath by refusing to be merciful. They have not honored God's word as holy. By refusing to be merciful, they have despised the very word which they have heard on the Sabbath. And Jesus is attempting to call them to repentance. Because in wonder of wonders, he wants to be merciful even to them. Indeed, the third commandment is a familiar one. But it is not an easy one. It does not simply demand that we set aside our work and gather together, although it certainly does demand that. Even more, it teaches us to hear the Word of God not as an opinion 
or a suggestion, but as the very voice of the living God. It calls us to allow the Word of God to go into our ears and to take root in our hearts so that then we might walk out those doors beginning to live lives that are shaped and ordered by the Word which we heard while we were inside the doors. And so this morning, it is our mouths that are stopped. For Jesus' teaching on the third commandment calls us to repent of our putting aside of his word and our living out there as if it didn't matter. Jesus' teaching on the Sabbath urges us to confess that we have considered ourselves righteous simply because we've walked through the doors and gathered together to come to church. This morning, Jesus calls us to understand that we do not keep the Sabbath holy and honor His Word when we then deny His Word by failing to be merciful and refusing to love our neighbors as ourselves. So the third commandment, in the third commandment, Jesus is doing for us today what He was doing for the Pharisees on that Sabbath. He is showing us our sin so that we might see our need for our Savior. In the house of the ruler of the Pharisees, it was the man with dropsy who was in need of mercy. But this morning, having seen our sin, the ones who are in need are are you and me, right? We are the ones whose understanding of the Sabbath has been lacking. We are the ones who have thought that we could keep this commandment while we then tire of God's Word. While our Bibles remain clothes on our shelves, while we complain with what is being taught, while we would prefer that our preachers would allow us to then continue in our comfortable sin, and all because we do not fear, love, and trust in God, Above all those things. This morning we are the ones who have failed to show mercy and have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. I mean, which of us is willing to go stand before the Lord and tell Him that we have loved every person as much as we have loved ourselves? And so we must hear this word of our Lord and honor it By confessing the sin that it reveals. Only then will we see why the Lord desires for us always to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I mean, do you see, dear people of God, that the Sabbath is given by God so that those who need mercy would be where they could receive it? Do you see, dear people of God, that the Lord's most earnest desire is for you, His people, to be gathered together so that you might hear His word and remember what He has done out of His great love for you. And how He continues to shower that upon you time after time, no matter what sins you've gathered here to confess. Do you see, dear people of God, that when you are gathered together to hear His Word and remember His promises, you are those who are being called up to a higher place to be joined together with Christ and honored by the Lord God Himself, right along with everyone who gathers with you in the pews or who kneels at the rail? And do you see that when you fail to love your neighbor, You are guilty of exalting yourselves above your neighbor. And in the third commandment, Jesus teaches us that he will then be the one who humbles you. But if you confess your sins, He who is faithful and just will take you who have humbled yourself on the side of the Lord and He will tell you to come and sit with Him at table. He will see you sitting there in your low estate confessing your sin and He will call you up to sit with Him. 
Because it is the Lord Himself who desires to be merciful, not only to a man with dropsy, but to Pharisees who have dishonored His Word, and to Christians like you and me who have often gathered together in this place and then gone out those doors, not letting His Word have its way with us. Do you see that while none of us deserve to have a seat of honor with the Lord, It is the Lord Himself, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus Christ, who humbled Himself so that He might love us. He gave up His seat at the right hand of the Father so that you and me and all who have sinned against the third commandment might be invited to move up higher and sit with Him at His table. He humbled Himself by taking on our flesh and blood and becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So that you and I might be those whom the Father showers His mercy upon when He exalts us who by the power of the Holy Spirit have honored God's Word by confessing our sins. You see, the Sabbath was not given by God so that you could stop your work and take a nap. Although, sometimes we might need a nap. No, the Sabbath was given by God so that you would have a particular kind of rest. The kind of rest that Jesus gives you when He shows you His mercy and gives up His seat and calls you friend and then invites you to come and feast at His own table. And so the Sabbath is honored and the third commandment is kept when we set aside our work to glory in the work of Christ. So come, you who have heard His word. Come, you who have labored and are heavy laden, come For Jesus is still the one who is keeping the Sabbath holy. And today in this very place, Jesus is the one who is working on the Sabbath. As He gives you rest in the forgiveness of sins. By giving you His own body and blood. So come and taste and see and rest in His mercy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God that transcends all our understanding guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. At this time we confess the Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus.
and for all people according to their needs. For the saints who offer here their worship and praise, that they would walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which they've been called, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church throughout the world, that she would be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Lord of the harvest to send workers into his vineyard, and for all pastors in Christ, that they would be kept steadfast in that word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all parents, that they would love and nurture their children as our own Heavenly Father loves us and provides for all our needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Sunday school and all our catechesis, that the word of God will be taught faithfully and the whole body of Christ grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the nations of the world, that those who have been placed in authority would serve with wisdom, seek to preserve life, and work for peace. For the benefit of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick, suffering, mentally ill, lonely, depressed, and all who have requested our prayers, including Vanita, Dean, Penny, Jay, Bonnie, Larry, David, Juanita, and Myra, that they would receive healing and patience according to God's holy will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn, especially the family of Daryl Ehlers and Charlie Cass, that they would receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit and so rejoice in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are blessed to carry children, especially Ashley, uh, Ashley, Charlie, Michelle, and Katie, that they be strengthened for the task and that their children be born without complication and be brought to the font to be born from above by water and the Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
We give thanks to You, Almighty God, that You have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore You that of Your mercy, You would strengthen us through the same in faith toward You and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.